Bayesian networks have given shape to the most complex problems that provide limited information and resources. It's being implemented in the most advancing technologies of the era such as artificial intelligence and machine learning. Keeping this in mind, I welcome you all to today's session. Hi everyone, I'm Zuleika from Edureka and today we'll be discussing all about Bayesian networks. Now without any further delay, let's discuss the agenda. We're going to start the session by understanding what exactly a Bayesian network is. Then we we'll move on and look at what a directed acyclic graph is, after which we'll look at an example and try to understand how Bayesian networks work. Next, we'll see how Bayesian networks can be practically implemented by using Python. Here we'll be trying to solve a problem known as the Monty Hall problem. We'll be discussing in depth about this in a short while. Finally, we'll end the session by looking at the different applications of Bayesian network. Also, before we get started, make sure you subscribe to Edureka YouTube channel in order to stay updated about the most recent and trending technologies. So let's get started with what exactly is a Bayesian network. A Bayesian network basically falls under the category of probabilistic graphical modeling, also known as PGM technique, that is used to compute uncertainties by using the concept of probability. So you need to understand the main and the most fundamental concept behind Bayesian networks is probability, right? So probability is a pretty simple concept, right? And a lot of mathematical models are actually based on the concept of probability. Now you might have heard of Bayesian networks as belief networks or casual networks, right? They're also known as belief and casual networks. They are used to model uncertainties by using directed acyclic graphs. Now it might seem a little confusing or the definition might seem a little vague to you. You know, when I'm saying that they're used to model uncertainties or they're used to model unknown values, right? That might seem a little vague to y'all, but I'll be explaining this with an example. So don't worry. Right now, all I'm telling you is that a Bayesian network is based on the concept of probability and it can be represented by using a directed acyclic graph. Now let's understand what exactly is a directed acyclic graph. A directed acyclic graph is used to represent a Bayesian network and like any other statistical graph, it contains a set of nodes and links where the links denote the relationship between the different nodes. So take a look at this diagram. Here you see a couple of nodes, one, two, three, four, basically represent the nodes. The arrows directing from each of these nodes represent the relationship between these nodes. If you look at the figure, you can see that node number three is dependent on both node number one and node number two, right? Because you can see links or you can see arrows directed towards node number three, meaning that node number three is dependent on one and two. Or you can also say that one and two are the parent nodes of node number three, right? Similarly, node number four is dependent on node number three, which makes node number four the child of node number three. Right? It's a simple relationship that we all can understand by just looking at the figure, right? We learned all of this in probably our 10th standard and 12th standard mathematics, right? So like I said, the nodes represent random variables and the edges will define basically the relationship between these variables. But the question here is what do these graphs model? What output can you get from a directed acyclic graph? A directed acyclic model will basically tell you the uncertainty of an event occurring based on the conditional probability distribution of each random variable. A conditional probability table is used to represent this distribution of each variable in the network. Now I know some of you might get confused, might not know what conditional probability is. So before we move any further, let's understand the basic math behind Bayesian networks. So like I mentioned earlier, Bayesian models are based on the simple concept of probability. Right? So let's understand what conditional probability and what joint probability distribution mean. A lot of you might actually be familiar with these terms, but I'm just going to brush you up with the basic concepts or the basic idea behind these two probabilities. Right? So joint probability is a statistical measure of two or more events happening at the same time. Basically, the probability of event A, B and C occurring. It can also be represented as the probability of the intersection of two or more events occurring, right? So that's the simple concept behind joint probability. Now, what I want you all to do is you all can leave a couple of comments in the comment section and tell me an example of joint probability. Right? On the top of my head, I can think of the cards and the decks. 
but those are very common examples let's come up with different examples right so please leave your examples in the comment section next we have something known as conditional probability so conditional probability of an event x is the probability that the event will occur given that an event y has already occurred right so this px pipe y basically represents the probability of event x occurring given that event y occurs right now there are two ways you can represent conditional probability if x and y are dependent events then the expression would be something like this right probability of x and y divided by probability of y however if x and y are independent events then the expression would be something like this right now if x and y are independent obviously the probability would be just given by p of x so if you're finding the conditional probability of p of x given that x and y are independent then obviously your answer is going to be probability of x alone right because both of them are independent of each other right so guys these were basically the two basic probabilities behind bayesian networks right i actually expect all of you to know these because bayesian networks is a more in-depth concept you require to have a basic understanding of probability concepts and that's why to learn more about the concepts of statistics and probability i'll be leaving a couple of links in the description box if you don't know these concepts then you can go through that video right so now let's come back to bayesian networks and let's look at an example of bayesian networks now let's assume that we're creating a bayesian network that will model the marks m of a student on his examination right so now the marks will obviously depend on a couple of factors right we've considered a couple of factors on which the marks will depend it will depend on the exam level which is denoted by e right exam level is basically a discrete variable that can take two values it can either be difficult or easy right so exam can either be difficult or easy right so if you look at the figure you can see that exam level is directly connected to marks meaning that your marks is dependent on your exam level next we have iq of the student now iq of the student again is a discrete variable that can take two values it has value high and low right so your marks are also directly dependent on your iq level right now the marks will in turn predict whether or not a student will get admitted into a university now this admission into a university is represented by a variable a right so the probability of a person getting admitted into a university will depend on his marks right that's why there is a direct link from marks and admission now an additional note that we have added here is that the iq will also predict the aptitude score of the student right meaning that your aptitude score is basically dependent on your iq level so i've represented this distribution to a directed acyclic graph and a conditional probability table right you can see the table that is connected to each of these nodes these are basically the conditional probability of each of these nodes right for exam level and iq level since they are root nodes or since they have no other parent nodes they just have a basic probability but when it comes to marks you can see that the conditional probability table has a separate column for iq level and for exam level right this is because marks is directly dependent on exam level and iq level and that table will basically represent the conditional probability similarly for aptitude score you can see that the conditional probability table has a separate column for iq right and for admissions there is a separate column for marks this is because there are links between these nodes right i hope all of you understood how you can represent a problem statement through a directed acyclic graph right that's the first step in building a bayesian network so like i mentioned this graph will clearly show how each variable or each node depends on its parent nodes right since we're creating a bayesian network that will model the marks of a student on his examination based on his performance what we're going to do is we're going to factorize a joint probability distribution right so joint probability distribution like i mentioned earlier is a probability of events occurring at the same time so if you take a look at this slide there is a formula for joint probability distribution right i have mentioned all the variables probability of a comma m comma i e and s right so let's see what each of these represent the first variable conditional probability of a is to m 
represents the conditional probability of a student getting an admission based on his marks right the second variable represents the conditional probability of the student's marks given his iq level and exam level right the third variable denotes the probability of his iq level the fourth variable denotes the probability of the exam level whether it's difficult or if it's easy and the last variable denotes the conditional probability of his aptitude scores based on his iq level right these are all the dependencies and all the probabilities that you get when you factorize a joint probability distribution so to sum it up what we did here was we studied the relationship between the parent and the child known for example the marks of a student depends on the exam level and the iq level of the student similarly the aptitude score depends on the iq level and finally his plans of getting into an university or getting admission depends on his marks so we represented this with a directed acyclic graph and we then measured the joint probability distribution right now if you haven't noticed already there is a pattern here right the probability of a random variable will always depend on his parent nodes that's why we can formulate the bayesian networks as this equation right here x of i basically denotes a random variable whose probability depends on the probability of its parent nodes right this is extremely simple right there's not much complication in this all you need to understand is the probability of a random variable depends on his parent nodes right now guys this is the thing about bayesian networks they are one of the simplest yet the most effective techniques that are applied in predictive modeling in descriptive analysis and so on now to make things more clear let's build a bayesian network from scratch by using python so guys before we get into the details and before we get into the coding part let's try to understand our problem statement now in this demo we'll be using bayesian networks to solve the famous monty hall problem for those of you who don't know what the monty hall problem is let me explain right the monty hall problem is named after the host of the tv series let's make a deal it is a paradoxical probability puzzle that has been confusing people for over a decade so this is how it works the game involves three doors given that behind one of these doors is a car and the remaining two have goats behind them right so basically the three doors and behind one of these doors you'll find a car if you're lucky enough you'll win the prize and behind the remaining two doors there are goats so how you start is you start by picking a random door let's say you pick a door number 2 right similarly the host which is basically monty knows where the car is hidden and he opens another door say door number 1 right behind this door there's going to be a goat 100% he's not going to open a door which has the prize right because he's the host of the tv show now here's the catch you're going to be given a choice and the host will basically ask you if you want to pick door number 3 instead of your first choice that is door number 2 right initially you chose door number 2 now you'll be given a choice whether you want to switch your door let's say you make up your mind and you choose door number 3 now right now what we have to do using bayesian networks is we have to find out if it is better for you to switch your choice or should you stick to your first choice right this is exactly what we're going to model we'll be creating a bayesian network to understand the probability of winning if the participant decides to switch his choice so like always the first step is to build a directed acyclic graph so the graph has three nodes like you can see right the door selected by the guest is represented by this node called guest door the door containing the prize is basically represented by prize door and the door monty chooses to open is represented by monty door so now let's understand the dependencies here right the door selected by the guest and the door containing the car are completely random processes right think about it a guest can pick up any random door and the door that contains the prize is a random door right that's what we're assuming however the door that monty chooses to open is dependent on both the doors it depends on the door selected by the guest and the door the prize is behind right monty has to choose in such a way that the door does not contain the prize and it cannot be the one chosen by the guest right these are the conditions you need to remember 
monty has to choose in such a way that the door does not contain the prize and it cannot be the one chosen by the guest right these are the two conditions for monty opening a door now guest door and prize door can be selected at random now what we'll do is we'll open up pycharm and code this problem statement so guys a short disclaimer is i'll be using python so guys for those of you who don't know python i'll be leaving a couple of links in the description box right it's a pretty simple code you don't have to be advanced python coder right a basic understanding of programming language would do right so let me quickly run you through the code and let's see how we can predict whether a person should switch his choice or not so i've opened my pycharm right now and i've typed out the entire code in order to save up some time it's a pretty small demo to be honest there's not much a lot of brains required in order to do this it's a pretty simple and understandable demo we just have to implement what exactly we understood from the monty hall problem right now in order to execute bayesian networks in python there is a package known as pomegranate right that might seem like a funny name but this package basically implements flexible probabilistic models which are ranging from individual probability distributions to compositional models such as bayesian networks and hidden markov models right now this package is not very widely used since the release of pybnn which is basically the python package for bayesian belief networks or something like that i'm not sure but yeah this is also an important it's a quite simple package it has all the functions for discrete distribution for computing your conditional probability distribution joint probability distribution and so on right so it has inbuilt functions for all of these and i think it's a very good package right so let's start off by understanding what these code snippets are doing so initially obviously we're going to start by importing the packages that we require then we're going to move on and we are building the guest variable so like i said initially the guest will choose a door at random now before we speak about that let's understand what this a b and c represents abc basically represents the three doors right guest represents the door picked by the guest prize represents the door behind which there is a prize and monty represents the door which monty opens right so now when it comes to understanding which door the guest will pick it is a random process that's why the probability of him choosing door a b and c is 1 by 3 right there are equal chances of him choosing any of the three doors similarly the door which has a prize is again a random process right any of the doors can contain the prize now since the door picked by monty depends on both the guest door and the prize door we've created a conditional probability table over here these are the different probabilities so we've basically mapped up all the possible scenarios that can take place right and then we're defining states with each of the guest prize and monty doors and we're passing in these states to the network and this is where we create the bayesian network now what we're doing in this code snippet is we've assumed that the guest has picked door number a look at the parameters here i've passed a parameter guest a meaning that we've assumed that the guest picks door number a given this information the probability of the prize door being a b or c is equal so now that we've created the bayesian network what we'll do is we'll test out a couple of use cases in the first use case we've defined that the guest picks door number a right let's look at the output of this first right here it says guest is door number a now when it comes to the prize door the probability that a b or c might have the prize is equal since any of the doors having the prize behind it is again a random process that's why the probability of the prize being behind any one of the doors is equal right 0.3 0.3 0.3 0 now when it comes to monty here if you notice that the probability of monty opening door number a is zero now why is this if you all remember very precisely i mentioned that monty will not be able to pick the door that is picked by the guest okay there are two conditions that monty has to fulfill he cannot open the door which is picked by the guest and he cannot open the door that contains the prize now there's only one thing we know for sure from our input which is that the guest opens door number a meaning that there is no way monty is going to open door number a that's why the probability for monty picking a is zero then we have door number c and door number b 
Now, probability of Monty picking C or B is equal. There's a 50% chance of him picking either of the doors, right? Now, to make things more interesting, in the next case, what we've done is we've given two inputs. We've said that the guest has picked door number A, and we know that Monty has picked door number B, right? Now what we're going to do is let's model how this looks here. It shows guest has selected door number A and here it shows Monty has selected door number B. Now what happens when it comes to the prize door? The probability that the prize door is the door number A is 0 0.3. The probability that prize door is door number B is 0. Now why is this 0? Now like I mentioned earlier Monty will never pick the door which contains the prize. So as we know Monty has picked door number B, which means that the prize is definitely not behind door number B, right? That's why this probability is zero. Now the probability of a prize being behind door number C is 0.66%. Now this is a little bit odd. So what we're doing here is initially the guest picked door number A. Now this Bayesian network basically tells us that if the guest switches to door number C, there is a higher chance that the prize is located in door number C. Right, so if you notice the output, the probability of the car being behind door number C is approximately 66%. Right? This proves that if the guest switches his choice, he has a higher probability of winning. Now, though this might seem a bit confusing to some of you, it is a known fact that guests who decided to switch doors won about two thirds of the time, which is basically 60% of the time. And guess who refused to switch one about one third of the time. So guys, this is not a bluff. You can actually look it up on the internet. A lot of people have used Bayesian networks to solve this paradox, right? To understand how this is possible. But yeah, you can look up more about this if you want to go ahead and research about why there's not a 50% chance of the price being behind A and C, right? So Bayesian networks are used in such cases that involve predicting uncertain tasks and outcomes, right? So that was a simple demo of how Bayesian networks can model the Monty Hall problem, right? So guys, I hope you found that interesting. I find that demo extremely interesting because there's still some sort of mystery behind why there is a 60% chance of a person winning when he switches his choice of doors, right? For now, let's move on and discuss the last topic, which is the different applications of Bayesian networks. Bayesian networks have innumerable applications in a varied range of fields, including healthcare, medicine, bioinformatics, information retrieval, and so on. Right? One of the most famous ones is disease diagnosis. So Bayesian networks are commonly used in the field of medicine for the detection and prevention of diseases. Like we saw earlier, it can predict uncertain activities and uncertain probabilities. Right? So they can be used to model the possible symptoms and predict whether or not a person is diseased, right? With limited information, they can perform a huge amount of predictions. Then it's also used in optimized web search, right? Bayesian networks are used to improve the search accuracy by understanding the intent of a search and providing the most relevant search results. They can very easily map your user intent to the relevant content and they'll deliver this through the search results. So Bayesian networks have actually been used in a lot of web search engines, right? Apart from this, it's also used in spam filtering. So Bayesian models have been used in the Gmail spam filtering algorithm for a couple of years now. Along with the naive bias algorithm in machine learning, they are used effectively in order to filter out emails which are spam. Right, so they basically classify documents by understanding the contextual meaning of the email. They are also used in other document classification applications. Another application includes in gene regulatory networks. Now, GRNs are a network of genes that have many DNA segments, right? They are effectively used to communicate with other segments of a cell, either directly or indirectly. So basically mathematical models such as Bayesian networks are used to model such cell behavior in order to form predictions and you know in order to form some sort of hypotheses about diseases and so on. Apart from this it's also used in biomonitoring so it plays a very huge role in monitoring the quantity of chemical doses that are used in pharmaceutical drugs right. 
So guys, that was it about the different applications of Bayesian networks. Basically, they are an uncertainty management system that will help you find out possible outcomes or find out possible solutions when you provide limited information. So guys, that was all about Bayesian networks. I hope you found this session informative. If you have any doubts regarding the session, please leave them in the comment section and we'll get back to you at the earliest. So thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great day.